In this video, we'll take a closer look at external content types and how they are represented in SharePoint Designer. To get started, we'll go ahead and open the site in SharePoint Designer. Go to Site Actions and use the menu option to edit in SharePoint Designer. Once SharePoint Designer is open, click on External Content Types to view all the available external content types. Once the screen loads, you can see all the available external content types that have been configured, as well as metadata about each external content type. You can see the name of each external content type grouped by its namespace, as well as the external system that it is connected to, and the type of external content type that's been defined. In this case, a .NET assembly. Down here you can see a database and a WCF external content type. And again, over here, you can see the namespace under which the external content type was created. If we take a look at the ribbon, you can see we can create new external content types. If an external content type is selected, we can also create an external list, edit that content type, delete the content type, or export the BDC model, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. For now, let's edit the region's external content type by clicking on the region's external content type. As you can see, we've loaded the summary view of the region's external content type. There's a lot of information on the screen, but it's broken up into different groups. For now, we can collapse the different groups and just focus on one at a time. For now, we'll go ahead and start with the external content type information group. Here you can find the name of the external content type as well as the, the display name, which can be unique. The namespace, which is specified when you're creating your external content type and a version, which is auto-incremented every time you save. However, you can also go in here and overwrite it. Another read-only field is the identifiers field, which shows any primary keys that have been defined. The office item type refers to a very powerful feature with the BCS. The BCS allows you to open items from an external list inside of Microsoft Office Outlook. Inside of Outlook, there are a number of different types, including generic lists, appointments, contacts, tasks, and posts that you can map your external content types to. A common example is to have a customer's external list and map that to a contact item inside of Outlook. Those customers would then show up inside of Outlook as if they were normal Outlook contacts. Very powerful functionality. If you're not planning to leverage that functionality, however, you can just select generic list. Finally, you can see which external system has been configured for this external content type. Next, we'll take a look at the external content type operations group. External content types contain a number of different operations, and this is really where all the work happens for an external content type. Operations define how your external content type is going to talk to your external system and bring back data. And there's a number of different types your operations can have. Regions happens to have all the different types defined that SharePoint Designer allows you to create. It has a create operation, an update operation, a delete operation, a read item, and a read list operation. Most of the configuration options for external content type operations happen on the operations design view, which we'll take a look at here in a little bit. Next, we have the fields group, which shows you all the different fields that are associated with this external content type. For instance, if you were to create an external list based on this external content type, these are the columns that would be made available to you. There's not a lot of configuration you can do here for your fields. Most of that is defined inside of your external content type operations. But what you can do is select which field you want to be set as the title. And again, that's referring to when you create an external list, an external list needs to have a title field just like any other SharePoint list. Next we have the external lists group which shows all the external lists that have been created based on this content type. You can actually go up here to the ribbon and choose go to list and it will take you to that external list. Finally we have the permissions group which shows you the permissions that have been defined for this external content type. Now you can't modify permissions here in order to do that you need to go inside of central administration now we'll use the ribbon to switch over to the Operations Design View. The Operations Design View is where we can manage the connections to our external systems. We can also create and manage our external content type operations here. 
In our Data Source Explorer, you can see we've got one external system that's defined, our AdventureWorks 2008 R2 database connection. We can choose to remove this connection or choose to add additional connections anytime we need. By browsing through our data source, we can add additional operations as well. In this case, we'll look for the Sales Territory table, and by right-clicking, we can choose to create a new operation based on that table. We can also select from our existing operations and choose to edit those operations. This brings up an Operations Configuration Wizard dialog that allows you to walk through the different parameters and properties that make up an operation. We'll talk more about this in another video where we talk about how to create external content type operations. As you can see, a lot of work goes into creating these external content types. And if you wanted to use a similar external content type on another system, you wouldn't want to go through and create it all by hand. As we saw earlier, SharePoint Designer gives you the ability to export your BDC model, which could then be imported into another system. We can use the breadcrumb to get back to our list of all external content types, and if we select the region's external content type, or if we wanted multiple, we can use control click to select multiple external content types, and then from the ribbon, choose to export our BDC model. We can give our model a name, in this case, demo, choose OK, and then we can decide where we want to save our file. In this case, we'll choose to save it to the desktop, and we'll save it to a file with a BDCM extension. Even though the file has a BDCM extension, it's actually just an XML file. So if we rename the file with an XML extension, we can then open that file in Internet Explorer and see what exactly is being saved off. If we browse through the XML file, we can see all the components that make up our BDC model. We have our line of business system instance here, which defines the connection string properties needed to talk to our database, and all the different external content types that we chose to export. If we drill down further, we can see all the different methods that were associated with that external content type. And if we drill down further still, we can see all the specific properties that were set that allow that operation to take place. The good news is that SharePoint Designer takes care of all of this for us behind the scenes, and we don't actually need to come into this XML file. Even better, we can import this file into another system, and our external content types will be available there as well. In this video, we've taken a look at how external content types and their operations are defined and represented inside of SharePoint Designer.